We come to Jesus. Touch me. Come on. Yes. God, I have I haven't had no vision. Touch me. Yeah. God, I have this impairment. Can you touch me? God, I surrender all to you. Can you touch me? Yeah. Come here for a second, Tim. He represents y'all. Stand up. Jesus, can you touch me? I'm standing before you in your presence. You touch this person over here, so can you touch me? You open this blind eye over here, but can you touch me? And Jesus thinks you're serious. Come on. Because he's heard prayers like that. And so he says, okay, I will change your predicament. I will heal you. I will restore you. So give me your hand. And let me take you out of the common place. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, but Je Come Jesus. Come on. I thought you were just going to touch my eye. Come on. I didn't come up here for you to take me out of the village. I just came up here to get a little knee jerk and a little goosebump and a little miracle story. Yes. Amen. I just wanted to testify about the goodness. I didn't really want to be taken out of the village. Come on. I just wanted someone to put on Facebook so everybody else would be jealous. That happens in my church. Come on. God don't show up in your church. God shows up in my church. Come on. Because he restored my vision. Amen. Amen. But I'm looking for somebody to say, you know what? I came up and asked Jesus to touch me, and he took me by the hand, and he led me out of the common place. Yes. And it was only when Jesus got the impaired man out of the common place did he step into the uncommon place, which was not influenced by the village, was not influenced by the fishy smell, was not influenced by the by their jobs of bringing in fish so that they could sell them in market. He was out. See, sometimes we want God to bless us, but don't mess with my fish. Come on. Last week it was grapes. This week it's fish. Amen. How many didn't eat no grapes last week? <laughs> See, we want God to touch us. I want God to heal me. But God, if you're taking me away from the fish, I don't know. We might have to compromise on that one. Yep. Would God really Come on. want me to take me? Come on. We start asking questions. God, would you really take me out of the village? I don't think God. Would God really want me to take me? No, God wouldn't take me out of the village. He always blesses right there in the village. Maybe some. Maybe not. His choosing. The question is, do you really want restoration or not? Because I'm pretty sure if you was literally blind and Jesus would come take you by the hand, you would go anywhere he would lead you for the restoration of sight. That's right. All too That's often right. we, right. we say we want Jesus to touch us, but really, oh God, I, I kind of want you to touch me, but if I have to leave my village. Yes, amen. Amen. If I have to leave family, if I have to leave my workplace, if I have to leave my house and my car, do I really want to leave the village? Come on, come on. The man must have really been able to because he followed Jesus from the That's common right. place That's right. to the uncommon place. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And the uncommon place was standing in the very presence of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Yeah. Thank you. So he's out there with Jesus. Jesus is about to touch him. We question ourselves. We say, I don't know if I want to leave the commonplace. Because once you leave the village or the commonplace, Jesus might just start spitting on you. Yep. Yeah. That's true. And we've heard about the spitting anointing before. Because it wasn't just a little while before that Jesus was at the pool of Shalom. Only this time he spits in the mud, creates some clay, scoops it up, puts it on the man's eyes. Yeah. Yep. He washes and receives his sight. So the man knew, when's the spitting anointing coming? 
He's probably just thinking, okay, let me just endure the clay. I know it's mixed with spittle, but let me just endure the clay. Little did he know that's not what Jesus did. Jesus didn't use no clay. Jesus, I can just picture this. Jesus saying, you want healed? I want healed. Jesus goes, <laughs> the Bible says he spit on the eye. Didn't say he spit on the eyelid. See, most of us would be like, okay, Jesus, just get it over with. Just get it over with. Jesus said, you have to open up and let what's in me touch what is in you. Amen. See, we come up here and we say, God, I want you to touch me. And our eyes are closed and our mouth shut and our ears are hearing whatever else. And Jesus says, I got to get what's in me inside of you in order to fix what's defective inside of you to make it look like me. Right. That's right. The Bible says he spit in the man's eye. Amen. Now, we believe in falling down. That's a fallen down spirit. I believe in that. We believe in laying hands on people. Yeah. We believe in taking a whole gallon of oil, yeah. putting a towel down and just... Yeah. But what would happen if the new wave of glory yes. would involve dragging you from the commonplace yeah. and spitting on you? Amen. How much flack would we get? Yeah. Come on. Facebook would be all a buzz. We would rather cope with our infirmities than have Jesus spit on us. Uh, let that soak in. We would rather deal with our issues that we think nobody knows about rather than have Jesus spit on us. I'm talking about preparing wineskins. Go with me to Mark chapter 8. Verse 25, look what it says here. Then Jesus placed his hand on the man's eyes again. His eyes were opened. His sight was completely restored, and he could see everything clearly. The Bible says he could see everything clearly because now he's not in a common place anymore that's taken his vision. More than likely, if the man had vision and lost vision, he lost it in Bethsaida because once you were impaired physically, like if you were blind or specifically limb, you didn't travel too much. So he came into he came into the common village with sight, but something in the common place took his sight Come and on. caused him to not be able to travel outside. That's good. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Oh, this ain't really gonna hurt me. Come on. Just stepping into the common once in a while is not going to hurt me. Getting over here where the fishing boats are in Bethsaida is not going to hurt me. And we walk in seeing, but little do we know, two months later, we have lost our vision. And we don't even realize that we're in the smelly commonplace. Thinking I can walk out anytime I want because I walked in anytime I want and surely I can walk out anytime I want. Amen. But we wake up one day and vision is gone. The things that we used to be passionate for now are blinding us. And all we can hear is the noise of the fishermen and all we can smell is the fishy smell. And it's not until Jesus comes and grabs our hand and says, I, in order to restore you, I have to get you out of what is common Come and put you what is in uncommon. Are y'all with me? Yes. I'm talking about preparing wineskins. Because if he don't get us out of the common, then the wine will be broken the wines will come into the wine skin, the skin will be broken, and the wine will lose its value. It will lose its intended purpose. But if he can get some people out of the commonplace into the uncommon place, rub a little spit on you, rub a little anointing on you, rub some oil on you, and some honey on you, then when he fills you up, you expand with the wine, and now you can be carried for its intended purpose. 
purpose. Amen. I'm talking about preparing wineskins. Yes, come on. Something has to die in order to prepare wineskins. But look what happens. He's standing there in the presence of Jesus, the son of the living God, in verse 25. Jesus has healed him has restored him, and then Jesus says something very interesting. Look at 26. Jesus sent him away saying, don't go back into the village. Yeah. 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 Come on. Yeah. Don't go back. I've led you out of yeah. the village, have restored everything the devil took from right. you in the village. Yeah. I've taken you from the commonplace to the uncommon. I have put what's inside of me. Now it's inside of you and it has restored your vision. So now don't go back. Yes. Come on. Yes. yes. Amen. And too many of us, we step in and out of the village like it's a merry-go-round. Sunday I'm in the uncommon place. Monday I'm in the common place. Yes. Come on. And Jesus says, on your way back home, listen, if he lived in Bethsaida, he would obviously have to go back to the village. So his home must have not been in Bethsaida. Because he said, as you are going home, don't even go through the village. Amen. Right, right, right. You're not meant to stay there. You're not meant to live there. You're not meant to camp out there. I have taken you from that place. I have restored what the enemy took. Now stay out of there. Amen. Stay out of bitterness. Amen. Come I've on. already restored you from bitterness. Quit going back to that That's stuff right. that should be dead and gone. Yes. Stay out of unforgiveness. Yes. It's only going to put you in a commonplace. That's it's right. only going to make you look like everybody else. That's it's right. going to make you talk like everybody That's else. Right. Stay out of the commonplace. That's right. Amen. Amen. Good word forever. That's why Amen. Jesus said if one hits you on your face, give him the other cheek because we are in an uncommon place. Amen. Amen. That's why he says to Peter, how many, when Peter says, how many times should I forgive somebody? Seven Seventy times, times seven because it's an uncommon place. Amen. Yeah. But the church has lived for the last 20 years in the village because we're trying to win the village over, but we're trying to win them with a common thing that they already have. Amen. And Jesus Come said, on. you got to get what's inside of me, That's inside right. of you, and That's in order right. to do that, i got to get you out of the village. Amen. And once you're out, don't go back there. Tell your neighbor, don't go back there. Don't go back there. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He says, I led you out of that messed up, fishy smelling, common village. So when you start on your way back home, don't go back there. I brought you out, restored your sight, restored your vision. I'm going to give you some new wine. So don't go back to the old wine skin. Yes, yes. I brought you out for a purpose. Yes. I rubbed on you for a purpose. Because I'm about to pour some new wine in you. But you keep going back to the old wine skin. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your revelation. Thank you. I've restored something in you. So don't lose the purpose of why I've given it to you. In other words, don't waste the purpose. And ever since God has given me this, there's a list of people. I'm not going to mention names, but there's a list of people that I've been praying for. Yes. And when I speak the name, I say, God, yes. don't let them waste the purpose. Yes. Amen. God, you've given them a purpose. You've given them new wine. Don't let them waste the purpose. Amen. Don't let their wine skin bust before you can put some anointing on them. Yes. You understand that every person that has come under the sound of Jesus Christ has a purpose yes. and is filled with wine. But all too often we waver back and forth from the village. And I've been praying, God, don't let them waste Amen. the purpose. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Don't let them Amen. waste the purpose. Amen. Go with me to Matthew chapter 8. I'm going to wrap up with this right here. 